Could you imagine having snakes for hair? That's why I'm bald. Good morrow my fellow freaks and weirdos, I'm Tom and welcome to Monster Gab, where we love to talk about classic and vintage horror. And in today's episode we're going to be talking about The Gorgon, a Hammer horror classic from 1964. This movie was directed by Terence Fisher and stars legendary icons with the likes of Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee and Barbara Shelley, as well as Michael Goodliff, Richard Pascoe and Prudence Hyman playing Megara the Gorgon. So in case you're wondering what a Gorgon actually is, it's basically a creature from Greek mythology. Now traditionally a Gorgon wouldn't have hair, but their head would be crowned with living venomous snakes. And if you were ever to look a Gorgon square in the eyes, you would turn to stone. Now the idea of that may sound ridiculous, but if you think about it, it's quite a terrifying thought. Now traditionally a Gorgon would take a human form, normally a female, and the most famous example of this is the character Medusa, who is a legend of Greek mythology, and her character can be seen in movies such as Clash of the Titans. Totally a great film by the way, you need to check that out if you haven't done so already. However in this movie that's not necessarily the case. In this story the Gorgon, who is named Megara, is described to be a bit of a monster, but it's also explained that she's a spirit who possesses living creatures, and it just so happens that in this movie she does possess a living female human being. Now before I move on to the synopsis, I just want to change the subject here guys. Do you like my t-shirt? This is from Something Wicked Podcast. Uh, they've got a great channel, there are a couple of guys from North Wales just like me, who also review horror movies and they have some great guests on there too. Uh, me being one of them. I'll leave a link in the description, you should totally check them out and give them a subscription. And I'll leave a link to the video that I starred in too. But it's a great t-shirt isn't it? In fact I'll just uh, stand up here and try and show you it in its glory. Not easy because I'm having to squat and that's not something I'm used to because I'm a very unfit human being. But yeah, check out Something Wicked Podcast. And this, this is a great t-shirt, I love it. So here is the synopsis then. During the early 1900s, at the turn of the century, a monster supposedly lives within the walls of an abandoned castle. The Castle Borski of the village of Vandorf. For many years, unsolved murders and disappearances of the local villagers have been mounting up. This is due to the efforts of the police authorities alongside Dr. Namaroff, played by Peter Cushing, who are hiding the real truth that the monster, who happens to be a Gorgon and has taken human form, is claiming victims and turning them into stone, because that is the fate of anyone who looks directly into her eyes. Despite their efforts to disguise the ongoings, Dr. Namaroff and the authorities are faced with multiple investigations by family members of one of the victims, as well as Professor Karl Meister, played by Christopher Lee. Who else shall fall victim? Is the Gorgon real or just a dark fable? And if she is real, then who actually is she? Only time will tell, if Professor Meister can solve the case in time, that is. Let's talk about this movie then, and the first thing that I should mention is that this film does feel more like a mystery thriller than an actual horror film at times. It does have enough elements to consider itself a horror film, and it does indeed have its own monster with the character of Megara the Gorgon, but she has very little screen time in this movie. The story in this movie does rely heavily on mystery and solving cases, and therefore it's quite slow paced. There are no on-screen deaths as far as I can remember, and there's not really any blood or gore. So for those of you who are looking for a little more action in your horror film, this is probably not the movie for you. But that's not to say that this is a bad film. I personally like the pacing of it, and I really do enjoy the mystery elements of it too. I also appreciate the fact that Megara doesn't have much screen time, because that also gives her character a bit more mystery. Many a time when we do see Megara, she just tends to be lurking in the shadows, and this gives her an almost ghostly, paranormal presence. And that's not necessarily a bad thing too, because when we do eventually get to see Megara in her full form as the Gorgon, it's a little bit underwhelming and disappointing, I'm afraid. 
Christopher Lee once quoted, the only thing wrong with the Gorgon is the Gorgon, and unfortunately I have to agree. Now granted we have to appreciate that this film was made back in 1964, and they certainly didn't have the same special effects techniques that we have today. But for a movie that was shot quite beautifully for the most part, the image of the Gorgon really does lower the quality of this film. It's mostly due to the snakes in the hair. Now, I don't know how else they could have really pulled this off. I mean, today they would just use CGI, but they couldn't just put a bunch of snakes on her head. So I suppose that was probably the best they could do back then. And you know, if anything, it just adds to the charm of the movie. It's one of the reasons why I love classic horror films. It's that kind of cheesy element that kind of draws you in and makes you go, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Barbara Shelley, who plays the part of Carla in this movie, apparently really wanted to play the role of Megara the Gorgon. It's also apparent that she had an idea for the special effects for the snakes on the head of the Gorgon and that they were to look quite realistic. But the production team told Barbara that they didn't have the funds for this special effect, nor the time. However, when the final print of the movie did eventually come out, the production team actually apologised to Barbara and said, we should have listened. <laughs> well, it's too late now, guys, isn't it? But anyway, you don't really see the Gorgon too much in this movie, so don't let those special effects put you off. In fact, let's get past all the negativity. Let's talk about some good stuff that this movie offers. This movie always puts me in a good mood right from the beginning. In fact, straight from the opening credits. Now, there's nothing particularly special about the opening credits. Nothing really happens apart from the credits themselves. And there's nothing special about the font. It's quite bland. What we do see are three very static shots of the castle Borski. And in each shot, the castle appears further and further away. And the daytime is slowly turning into night. And whilst this is on display, we hear some wonderful nerve-tingling music in the background. Music by James Bernard. Or is it Bernard? Is it Bernard or Bernard? I know a guy called Bernard and it's spelled the same way, but it doesn't sound right. It sounds better to say James Bernard, right? I'm not talking to anyone, by the way. I'm the only one here. Or am I? Anyway, going back to the castle, I just think it aesthetically looks beautiful and it just looks really dark and eerie with the music going on. It's a great opening to the film. And the castle, I believe, is a miniature model and it was the same one that was used in The Evil of Frankenstein, another Hammer Horror classic that was also filmed in 1964, I think. So there you go, folks. Hammer Productions were very resourceful too. As I mentioned earlier, the movie is shot quite beautifully, and a lot of that is due to Hammer's set designs. There's a funny thing about Hammer movies, the set designs always have a bit of a cheap look about them, but they still look really good and authentic, and they really do make you feel like you've travelled back in time, because Hammer movies were traditionally quite often period-based movies. As well as the set designs, one of the scenes that I really do like is right at the beginning where we're in the dark woods and it just looks really creepy and gives you a feeling of vulnerability, especially as there's a Gorgon on the loose and there are two characters on their own in these dark woods. And of course we see a full moon because that's just done in typical Hammer fashion. But it is wonderful to see these shots of the full moon just peeking behind the clouds at night. In fact, there are a few scenes where we see the full moon. There are a lot of full moons in this movie, probably far too many for a year's worth. But, you know, it makes for the horror, right? The cast for this movie is a star-studded lineup, so obviously we're expecting quality acting. But Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee really do raise the bar for me in this film. During the 60s and the 70s, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee were very typecast for the horror genre, especially for Hammer Productions, but that's not necessarily the case for their characters. Peter Cushing plays the part of a doctor, and Christopher Lee plays the part of a professor, and I know they do sound like very typical characters for a Hammer horror movie, but the way they play these characters is not typical. They use different tones for their voice and their mannerisms, and they're very fitting to their characters. They really do show that they have versatility and quality acting. I also really like Peter Cushing's character as Dr. Namoroff in this film. He's not necessarily the villain in this movie, but he's no good guy either. One thing I will say about this movie, especially after watching it a few times now, is that it does feel a little bit incomplete. There seems to be no real explanation as to why Dr. Namoroff and the police 
are hiding the truth about a monster living in a castle and they're having to make up stories as to why so many bodies are disappearing. Without giving away any spoilers, you could say that Dr. Namoroff does have a little bit of reason actually, but he doesn't really have any authority, not over the police anyway. As for the police hiding the truth, the only thing that I could figure out is the fact that they were just too scared to deal with the real situation. But for me personally, there seems to be a deeper reason as to why they're hiding this truth and it's not really explained. Or maybe I'm just reading the film the wrong way. This movie also fails to explain the true nature and purpose of Megaera the Gorgon. For instance, why is this Greek mythological creature here in this village of Central Europe? Why is she turning her victims to stone and what does she gain from doing such actions? None of this seems to be explained in the movie. As I explained earlier, the movie is very slow paced with its mystery elements, especially with the fact that it doesn't have any gory scenes or on-screen deaths, but it does lead to a huge climax with a swashbuckling scene that takes part on the castle grounds during a lightning storm, and it's a very much needed action sequence. This for me is the perfect ending to a film that's very easy to watch and brings any of the remaining characters left in the movie together for one big final sequence. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of this movie then. The pros for me are the fact that this movie just looks beautiful. All of the scenes that are shot indoors and outdoors are fantastic. The music is absolutely top notch and gives the movie a really creepy feeling from start to finish. And of course the acting in this movie is pure quality and wonderful to watch. The cons in this movie are obviously the snakes on Megaera's head. Fortunately, we don't see her too often in this film and it's not enough to distract away from the rest of the movie. And although I really do enjoy the story to this movie, one of the cons for me is the fact that there are a lot of plot holes that are not thoroughly explained for my liking. Okay folks, I'm going to rate this movie out of 10. Now, I do highly recommend this movie, especially for those of you who love classic horror films, especially Hammer horror films. I love Hammer horror films, they're my favourite. But this movie is far from perfect, and it's not for everyone. And with that in mind, I'm going to give this film a 6.5 out of 10. And I think, personally, that is a fair score. But you know what? If you disagree, let me know in the comment section. In fact, have you seen this film? What do you think of it? Do let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't seen this film, are you likely to watch it now that you've seen this review? Please do let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. And that is all we've got time for, folks. So until next time. I don't know who they are, but if you don't subscribe, they will get you. So make sure you are indeed subscribed. Click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new video here on Monster Gab. Click the like button if you did indeed like the video and leave that comment down below. Share with your friends and thank you so much for stopping by. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.